Reporting live from Channel 11, it's Stella the Pup on The Stiletta Show. I'm Stella the Pup. Tonight we have a special report with us on coral reefs. Shotzi the Hound is an avid coral reef scientist and recreational scuba diver, here to tell us more about the forests of the sea. What are some of the topics you'd like to cover today, Shotzi? Greetings, Stella. We will discuss what coral reefs are, why they are important, threats, and protection of these beautiful endangered biomes. Sounds like we have a lot to cover! Tell us about where we can find coral reefs! I sure can, Stella! There are three major regions of the world coral reefs are found. The Indo-Pacific, the wider Caribbean, and finally the Red Sea. So what exactly makes up the coral reefs? I always imagined they'd be pretty pointy on the paw pads, if you know what I mean. The thing that makes these beautiful, diverse ecosystems all boils down to a small thing called polyps, which group together forming very large colonies acting as one. Polyps are soft-bodied and are actually related to other organisms including the jellyfish and sea anemones. The base of the polyp is called the calcul, that is composed of limestone that aids in protection of the organism. Coral reefs are, take hundreds or even thousands of years to develop and are grown by the calculs of one colony of polyps attaching to the calculs of polyp, other polyps' colonies. The average size of a polyp is quarter inch to twelve inches, relatively the size of a softball. The lifespan of an individual polyp is very diverse, ranging from two to several hundred years. The lifespan of a colony can range from five years to several centuries. Who knew that all this time, coral has been a living organism that we've been letting slowly die off our earth? Don't the fish need coral reefs, Shotzi? That's right, Stella. What makes coral reefs so unique is the diversification of life they sustain. Only on the coral reef can you find nearly every group of organism representing a billion years of evolution. Organisms include sponges, corals, sea worms, echinoderms, crustaceans, mollusks, fish, sharks, rays, marine reptiles, and marine mammals. So there are lots of pretty colored fish that need coral reef. What's the problem then? Well, as with all beautiful things, they usually leave you. <laughs> oh, Taurus, why? <laughs> Anyways, these stunning habitats are projected to reduce by more than 83% over the next 20 years. That's higher than my ecology midterm grade, Chatsy. I know, Stella. As So as you can see, it's a real problem. Threats including temperature change, chemical spills, overfishing, and acidification are leading to coral bleaching. Is that like bleaching my luscious locks? No, Stella. Coral bleaching is a progressively more predominant problem for coral everywhere. Coral have a unique symbiotic relationship with microscopic algae called zooanthellae. These algae help the coral get their food and give them their color. However, when the organism becomes stressed due to pollution, change in temperature, increased sunlight, or extreme low tides, the algae leave the coral. This results in the coral turning white and eventually dying. So how do we stop these coral reefs from all becoming beautiful blondes like me? There are many agencies working towards the protection of these endangered biomes. Both the EPA and the National Park Association is working to preserve these biomes. Anchoring a vessel on top of a coral reef can result in large sums of fines. The Coral Reef Protection Act allows for fines starting at 150 per square meters of coral damage and escalating up to $250,000 per occurrence. 
The state of Hawaii actually plans to sue the U.S. Navy for destruction of coral reefs for compensation. Recently, new laws and regulations have been created to tightly regulate and protect coral reefs. Thanks for coming to talk to us, Shotzi! Thank you for having me, Stella. I hope you, your viewers learned a lot about the benefits of protecting our remaining coral reefs. I bet they sure did! Next, on the Stiletta Show, we hear from Airbud about this week's March Madness game.